Hi everybody, quick overview about strings. You've used strings last year, but um, only in a very limited fashion. Um, this, of course, is not going to be a comprehensive review, but kind of the basics that you need to know to get this problem set done, and we'll talk more about strings as the year goes along. So what is a string? Uh, internally, a string is stored as an array of characters, and so you can think about it that way, as illustrated here. So if I have a string variable that contains this is a test, um, if I wanted to access index number three, that corresponds to the lowercase letter s right there. Um, just like arrays, the word index represents a position or location for individual characters. And it includes all characters, not just letters. So index four contains a space character um, between the words this and the word is. So even though internally it's stored as an array, you can't use array syntax to access individual characters the way that you can in some languages. Um, and in particular, if you have used Python and you know about slices, Java does not offer anything way nearly as cool as slices, unfortunately. Um, so let's pretend this variable is called msg for message. Um, instead of saying msg0, you would have to say msg substring 01. Uh, the word substring means part of a string. So what that method does it, is it will extract some sequence of characters from inside the larger string. So the first number is the index you want to start at. And the second number is the index that you want to end at. But it doesn't give you the last character in that range. So uh, for substring 0 to 1, it's just going to return uppercase T because it doesn't return the character uh, in the index that you end at. So that's how you would uh, return a single letter. If I wanted to extract the entire first word this, I would go from 0 to, wait for it, 4, uh, because I don't want to include the space that's actually at index 4. So you can think about this as working similar to other things in Java, where um, the end boundary is not included in whatever's happening. Um, for example, math.random. OK. Here are a couple of examples illustrating basic syntax. So you are already used to the idea that you can create a string literal in this way. So you have string message defines the variable. And then you can assign it a value by saying equals and then have your string in quotes. Oops, you should probably have a, well, I'm going to leave the semicolons off, I guess, in the middle. Um, strings are actually objects, and they have a constructor. So you could also create a string this way. You'd run the new keyword and string, which is the data type, and then uh, give it a string literal, and it would that this does the exact same thing as the first line here, um, but it's more typing, and so you don't see it very often. Um, even though strings are uh, even though strings are objects, they are what's called an immutable data type, which means that once created, they can't be changed at all. Um, we'll talk more about why that is and kind of what practical consequence that has for your programming later on. But for now, just know that that's true. Um, I already mentioned substring to you. So for substring, you give it the, the starting index and the ending index, and it will return all of the characters from start up to but not including end. Um, so this would give us the last character because the exclamation mark is at index 11, and I'm going from 11 to 12. And so even though 12 would be out of bounds, um, this does not actually go out of bounds because it never accesses index 12. If I was going to change this to index 13, then it would throw an out of bounds exception. The first character would be from index 0 to, uh, to 1, or if I wanted to get the entire first word hello, that would be indices 0 to 5. There is another version of the substring method that only takes one argument. It takes one input, and that's the starting index. And so it will return the substring starting at that index going all the way to the end. So here we're starting at index 6, which is the lowercase t, and it would take us all the way to the end, so it would be there with an exclamation mark. Testing strings for equality is a major thing that they try and catch you up on in the AP test. Um, you will for sure make this mistake. It is very natural to want to do this if you're going to test two strings to see if they're equal. You say, is string 1 equal to string 2? Unfortunately, this is testing whether uh, these two strings are at identical memory locations. Like, are they identically the same string? Not, are they two strings that have the same letters? That's a slightly different question. Um, and if that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry. We'll talk about it in more depth later, and it will make sense. Uh, but for now, know that if you want to test if two strings 
have the same letters in the same order, you need to use dot equals. So this would return true only if string one actually equals string two. If you want to test if two strings are not equal, then you just put an exclamation mark at the beginning, which is uh, which will negate the uh, Boolean return value here. So if this is returning true, the exclamation mark would flip it to false. So that's a way of saying, is it not true that these things are equal? The last useful method we'll talk about um, in this uh, problem set is the index of method. You can think of this as a search method that will search for a particular character or sequence of characters in the string and tell you the location where that sequence occurs. Um, so here I've got domo arigato Mr. Roboto and I'm going to search for the first occurrence of space. So message is the thing I'm searching. Index of is I'm saying what is the index of this substring? So I'm giving it a space, so it will start its search at index zero and search until it finds what we're looking for, which is space, and it will return, holy moly, it will return not a string, of course, but the location where it found the string. So it will return an int. Um, so in this case, it would return the int five because zero, one, two, nope, sorry, four, because D is zero, then one, two, three, four. Um, same thing, if I wanted to search for A, that would return, uh, five because that's the index where a is um, i can also search for longer substrings so i can say where does mr happen um, and that would return the index where the sub where that entire substring starts so it would return the index of that m um, it's also possible to start your search not at the beginning because if i'm looking for the second space for example where's the location of this I can't search for space because it always starts the search at zero, which means it's always gonna find only the first occurrence of whatever we're looking for. So a different version of index of has a second argument, a second input value, um, which is the index where you're gonna start your search. So here I'm saying, let's start our search at index 10 and we're still searching for space. So it would start you know, somewhere in the middle here at index 10 and it would go forward from there and it would return the index of the next space over. There are, of course, lots more string methods in Java. Um, the reason I'm not telling you about them is because the AP test wants you to use a, subset, a subset of Java. So some things that you are able to do in Java would not count in a free response question in the AP test. And so I want you to get really used to using uh, the methods that are part of the AP test. Um, if you know, I'll, I'll actually have us use some other methods because it's just too painful to restrict ourselves to the AP subset. Um, but in particular, there's a char at method that I'm going to ask you not to use. Instead of do, saying char at index, I'm going to ask you always to use substring if you're trying to get an individual character. That said, I gave you a, a little uh, reference here that shows you uh, not a complete list, but a you know, relatively complete list of the more common string methods that you are likely to want to use. Um, so it's got return type, method name, and a short explanation about what it does. All right, let's talk about a few recipes. So if you want to get the last character from a string, if you know how long your string is, of course, you could use indices. Um, that's less good. The reason it's less good is because these are magic numbers, which means that the other programmers are going to look at those numbers and they won't know why they're there. We know that 11 is significant because it's the index of the last character, but another programmer won't know that. So slightly better would be to ask your string how long it is by using the length method. Um, just like arrays, this is going to give you the total number of letters, but the index of the last letter is going to be one less than that. So here I'm saying, let's get out a single letter from our message. The starting index is going to be the index of the last letter in the string, and we get that by asking how many letters and subtracting one. And then, since we're only going, since we're only trying to extract the last character, we want the ending index to be one larger than that, so it's just message.length. So this is better, and that's pretty common. I would say maybe even one step better than that, um, without using char at would be to use the other form of substring where you don't actually include the ending. You just tell it where you want the starting search location to be, the starting index. And then if you don't include the second argument, it will return the substring all the way to the end. So I'd say that's the best version. If you want like the second occurrence of something, you could use index of to search for the first occurrence. So now why, why do I always do this? 
Um, so that would return the uh, index of the first space. And then you can use index of again to search for space. Only this time you're going to start at the location of the first space plus one. So you're starting one character later. And then if that's where you're starting, when the next time it finds space, it will return to you the second space. An important note at this point is if you search for a substring inside a larger string, and the larger string doesn't contain what you're searching for, index of is supposed to tell you where that thing occurs. So if that thing doesn't actually exist in the string you're searching, index of returns negative one as a way of in uh, as a way of signaling that what you're searching for doesn't exist. Finally, let's look at a couple of looping patterns. So um, this is how you would loop over every character in a string. You would start at zero and you would go to the length of the string, and then you would use substring to get out the character at the current index up to the next index. So remember, whenever you have a difference of one here, that means you're just going to return a single character. And that character is letter. So letter is going to take on the value of each of the characters in message one at a time. And then you can do something like test its value or um, display it along with some other things. Um, if you want to check adjacent characters, you could either start at one and go to the end, in which case you would want to get the letter that's at your current index. But then because you're starting at one, you would miss the first letter in the string because the first letter is at index zero. So you would also get out the previous letter, which is the letter directly before letter. So you would start at index i minus one and go up to i. So that would check adjacent pairs of letters, starting with the first two, going to the end. Alternatively, you could start at zero, in which case letter would be the letter starting at index i, which would be zero. And then the adjacent letter would be the one directly after it. So we'd call that next letter, and you'd get the one at i plus one. So the difference is here we start one letter in, and we get the current letter plus the one before it. Here we start right at the beginning, and we get the current letter and the one after it. And the only thing to be careful of is you, you want to subtract one here because you don't want to go all the way to the end of the list, because if you do, then when you try to get next letter, that will be out of bounds because you'll try to access an index that's past the end of your array. And of course, when I say array, I mean string. Okay, I hope that was helpful.